Hey, juniors, welcome back to Washington Conference Cat Meeting. We are in one of the most exciting places on campus, the gazebo, which is also known as one of the soccer courts. And here we have Pastor Kai Kai showing me some of his moves that he learned, but I don't think he'll be able to get past me because I am wearing the Brazil jersey. Now, I was born in Brazil, and I don't know anything about playing soccer, but when I put on this jersey, no ball will ever get past me. So um, let's try that again, Pastor Kai Kai. So Pastor Kai Kai is playing here. The score is uh, starting over, 0-0, zero to zero, and Pastor Kai Kai is going to come in from the front. Oh, not so fast. Oh. And I remember you guys playing this game. It's lots of fun. We'll give Pastor Kai Kai a few chances to try to make a goal. And I think he's going to have to recruit some backup <laughs> help with Pastor. Oh, he got it. All right. Well, we missed you guys. It's been kind of, actually, it's been kind of boring here without you. We hope that we could do something together with you guys again in the future. But have you been blessed by the virtual camp meeting? Has Pastor Edder's messages spoken to your heart every single day? This is day eight. That means tomorrow is our last day. So there's a special program for you today. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of weather we're going to have anymore because Caleb Cloud has been predicting all kinds of crazy weather. But stay tuned for a special junior service. And at the very end, We'll go back and I'll tell you who's winning, me or Pastor Kai Kai. Have a good night. All right, you said you guys want to play some games. What are you guys good at? Uh, games. Are you good at basketball? Yeah. Uh, are you guys good enough to beat me in basketball? Oh, easy. No. Oh, easy. easy? No. 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 Confident. Confident. No. Yeah. All right. I'll give you the ball first. All right. Think Jesus played basketball? What? Maybe. Maybe. What do you think? Uh, I bet if he did, he'd be good sport, though. Right? Win or lose, I bet he'd be good sport. All right. Not fair. Two against one. Two against one. <laughs> now I remember the hoop being higher than. Yeah, I think I think I'm growing. Oh. No, it's too much. <laughs> All right, David. What do you got? What do you got? Come on. What do you got, David? Come on. Oh. All right. All right, you start out. I start over here now? Okay. And now it's so I check it back to you guys? Yeah, but now it's your ball. Okay, it's my ball, but I check it to you. Hey, Mom. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Got to back it up. Got to back it up. Ah! 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 In heaven, we're gonna have winners and losers. No, I think everybody's gonna be a winner in heaven, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, why don't we say a closing prayer? Right. How about Levi, you start, then David, then me? All right, okay. Yeah, thank you that we can be here today to do all this acti doing activities. Thank you for camp meeting, and please help us have a good rest of this day. And amen. amen. Thank you for popcorn prayers. Uh, thank you for yes. popcorn. <laughs> Uh, thank you for everything. Please help the people who are struggling right now. And yes. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for juniors. Thank you for David and Levi. 
Thank you for Jesus. And Lord, I just pray this can still be an amazing camp meeting. I'm sorry that we can't all be in person, but Lord, thank you that we can collectively get together online and still worship you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, good game. <laughs> This is John Henry. Welcome back to A Minute Outdoors. Today I was walking by my apartments and I found this beautiful forsythia bush. Forsythia is an ornamental plant that is not native to this area, but it is beautiful. And it actually has a lot of nectar inside all of these little flowers. You can see ants and flies feeding off that nectar. And that's really great because at this time of the year, those little insects need to find food in order to survive. Larger animals will start to rely on those insects in order to survive as well. I'm so glad that God provided a chain of events, that he had everything happen in the right order. Because if the bush didn't come out in early spring and start blooming and providing nectar, the flies wouldn't have food, and the dragonflies and the spiders and the frogs wouldn't have food, and then the snakes and the birds wouldn't have their food. It's, it's amazing. and I'm so glad that God has a plan. He's got a plan for your life and for mine too. So this has been another Minute Outdoors. Tune in next time. We'll catch you later. Hey there again, Junior. It's great to see you. Uh, the forecast, uh, not really going to be detailing much of what's happening in the atmosphere this time. This time we're going to update you on what's happening beneath the Earth's surface because uh, this is going to have some impacts as far as possible high water coming up here on the west coast of Washington. So what is happening is we're getting some indications that underneath the Earth's surface we're getting a little trembling that's happening and it looks like we could be dealing with a decent sized earthquake as we go over the next few hours. Now what that will do is out over the ocean one once that happens, that will lift up the landmass underneath the water. And with that being the case is the water that's on top of there will also be lifted up and that will start to rush its way closer to the coast and on here closer to Washington, which will mean that a lot of areas right along the coast and that are not really too high as far as sea level might be covered by this water that's coming in from off of the Pacific Ocean. So of course, uh, that's something to really keep in mind. And at events like this, whether they are hurricanes or wildfires or even possibly signs in the skies. Uh, we have been told about this and how these could be signs, especially when they start happening more frequently, of Jesus' second return. In Luke 21, 25, it reads, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So uh, yeah, we definitely have one big wave that would be roaring as it comes on in. Uh, this is the thing though, when it comes to tsunamis, you see the water get a little higher at first, but then you also start to notice it get extremely low. It goes out into the ocean and it's almost enticing to want to go out because it just goes so far out. People want to walk out as far out into the ocean as they possibly can. The thing about it is, that's a sign that that water is beginning to come back and it's going to be racing onto the coast and really starting to uh, overtake the land mass. Now, these type of things, they don't come without warning. Of course, we know here as far as scientists and meteorologists and people who keep up with these things of uh, these certain events that could be taking place based on some of the computers and the technology that we use nowadays. Now, of course, God has given us ample warning beforehand, not through technology per se, but through his prophets. Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So just like he is able to give us these warnings about possible storms coming in or hurricanes or even possible tornadoes, he's able to 
work with the prophets in the Bible to give us an ample warning of when his second return might be nearing. Of course, we don't know when exactly that's going to be happening, but when we could be getting closer to that possible time. And well, for me, I'm a meteorologist. I'm able to give you that information and we're never able to ever give you the specifics on every little thing as far as high temperature and the amount of rain and the wind and all of that and where it's going to be at a very particular time. We're not able to do that, but we're able to give you a really good estimation on what we expect to happen as we go throughout the day. The same comes with the second return of Jesus. So what we need to do is that we need to stay focused on our Bible. The thing about it is too, at the same time, we don't need to be stressed about uh, stressed out about these things or we don't really need to obsess over it. We know that it's there and we use it as a guide so that we'll be able to take the necessary action when the time is that we need to take that necessary action. So stay glued to your Bible, but at the same time, of course, stay close and very, very um, tender heartedly uh, in a close relationship with Jesus Christ and with his love and love him and build that relationship so that you may be able to not only just know about these signs that are coming into the near future, but also that you may be able to be with him one day in eternity. God bless.
Hello juniors, welcome back. My name is Pastor Eder Pagola. Has that ever happened to you when you're doing an activity and you seem to enjoy it, but then all of a sudden you're not good, maybe you're having a bad shooting day or playing in the court and things aren't going your way and you get frustrated and you say, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do that. But you keep trying and you keep trying and eventually it goes in. That happens to every one of us. There are things in life that we have a difficult time doing and we wanna quit, we wanna give up. But we need to move forward. We need to continue moving forward and not give up. And like my daughter, Alexia, and my son, Jonathan, they kept shooting until they made one. It reminds me about a story in the Bible, and that's found in Genesis. Genesis chapter three, and ch Genesis chapter four. I mean, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter three and Exodus uh, chapter four. And it's the story of Moses. You know, Moses, as we all know, uh, you know, a lot of us know Moses for the wonderful individual that he was. But if you don't recall, Moses was a murderer who had to run out of Egypt because the king, the Pharaoh, was going to kill him for killing an Egyptian. So Moses went out and he slept out, moved out of Egypt and eventually found himself in a foreign land for many years. It wasn't until one day he was walking and taking care of his sheep and he saw a burning bush. As he approached this burning bush, he saw, man, that's something weird about this bush. Why is it burning? I'm sure you know the story. And there, Moses came in contact with the great I Am, God himself. And God had a plan for Moses. He wanted Moses to go out and spread the good news of liberation to go speak to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Well, we know how that goes. Moses begins to have all these excuses. And sadly, sometimes that is what happens when we can't or don't want to, more than anything, don't want to do something. And that's found in Exodus chapter three, verse 11. The first one is found and says, I don't have the ability. However, if we will go look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, verse 13, it says, I can do all things in God who strengthens me. Moses had the ability of God inside him. The next excuse was, I don't know what to say. Yet in the book of Acts, it says Moses was great in words and in deeds. The third excuse was, I don't have any authority or a position. Number four was, I am not a good speaker. And number five is, my Lord, please send someone else. For whatever reason, Moses did not want to. Whether he did not believe in himself, whether he didn't want to take the responsibility on himself. The wonderful thing is that God had an answer every time Moses had an excuse. God had an answer to his unbelieving heart. And the wonderful thing is that God was with Moses all the way through. Moses eventually, I think, felt like he had no choice. God had an answer for every question, every obstacle he put in his way. And that is the wonderful thing about God, that He will open doors when we create them, when we create brick walls, He will knock them down. All we got to do is be willing to hear Him out. God has a wonderful plan for each one of us, and He has placed the ability in each one of us to move forward in His direction in whatever obstacle that we may have. And as we know, Moses then, his brother Aaron, they connect together, who, by the way, they hadn't connected in a very long time. And then they go and they face the Pharaoh. And we know about 
what happens from there, right? And all the things and wonderful things that God had to do in order to uh, let the Jewish people and the Israelites out of Egypt. It was God's hand. God was in control the whole time. And Moses was just a vessel. He's just a tool. And he moved forward. And because of him and because of all the work that humanly possible Moses and Aaron did, God used them accordingly. And remember, we got to remember that. God uses us as vessels, as tools. We just got to be willing. We just got to let him into our hearts. And God's placed talent in each one of you. And all of you have the ability to move forward with God's direction, God's guidance, and God's power. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you because you've given us the tools that we need to move forward. Sometimes things don't seem possible. They don't seem like they're achievable. But Father, with you, all things are possible. And we want to give you glory for that. Please be with the juniors as they have obstacles and maybe sometimes they put things in their hearts that they can't do. But Father, guide them. Be with them. In your name we pray. Amen. Remember guys, all things are possible with God. Move forward. Embarrass me like that in front of the juniors. Oh, oh. are we back? Oh, are we we're on? Back. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Hey, juniors, how was the program this evening? Oh, for some of you, maybe in the morning. Yeah. Boy, we really miss you. We hope that you were blessed with the program today. And I don't know how many of you live near the coast. How was that tsunami? Oh, that's frightening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed the message once again tonight and that if you like to play soccer, if you used to play here at camp meeting, that you would join in with your friends. Get, out, get outdoors. Be safe. Play. Have fun. And remember, when the World Cup comes around, there's one team that you should go for. Myanmar. <laughs> team Brazil. Whatever Brazil. team you go for, hope that you have fun. God bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow for our... Final, Final day. day.